It's good to be here to UIC campus. I'm a professor in the Northwestern University down the road in here. And my lab, as you heard, has been involved in studying the molecular pathogenesis of leukemia that are associated with chromosomal translocation. And for the past 25 years, we're trying to understand molecularly why this translocation in kids causes leukemia and how we can take advantage of this information for development of targeted therapeutics. Uh, so I think it's a very um, stunning that uh, our uh, included in this uh, edge of extinction talks because uh, we would like to add leukemia to a list of things that we would like to be extinct. There are some, some things you heard from the earlier speakers that we would like to keep. Leukemia definitely we would like to get it extinct from the face of the earth. But before I tell you uh, what we have done and where we're going and how we're using these therapies in the clinic, I want to tell you who I am, where I come from, and how I got here. So this is me at the age of two years old, and this is my sister. She's about three years older than me with my mom and my grandmother. And I was a very curious boy. All growing up, all I wanted to do, I wanted to discover things. So I remember people coming to our house, and as a three years old, I would walk up to them, can you tell me something to discover? And uh, every toy I got, within five minutes, I opened it up because I want to learn how it works. And I think I got my curiosity from this fellow over here, my grandfather, who is a clinician scientist. He was a, by training, he was a radiologist and a radiation physicist. And only he could talk about medicine, experiments, his patients, and power of research on medicine. That's all he wanted to talk about. So after a few years, I think my grandmother got sick of it because she was always spending time in our house. And my mother, who loved her father dearly, didn't want him to be alone, so she used to ship me over to their house. So I spent the countless lunches and dinners with him, talking about his experiments, his patients, medicine, and discovery. And when I was five years old, he asked me to join him to his clinic, you know, so shadow him, following me around. And I was basically hooked at the first uh, sight, you know, fell in love with science. And for the past 50 years, this is exactly what I've been doing. So work in my laboratory is very much interested in understanding chromosome, the higher order structure of chromosome. This is an entity in our, in our cells that actually carries the genetic information. And how DNA within our chromosome package into this large structure as we know as chromosome, and how the machinery involved in opening up this chromosome that are involved in pattern of expression. Okay. So one thing about chromosome is that, you know, want this few concepts I want you to know before we go through the talk for today that makes understanding easy for all of us. So chromosomes, this is higher order structure that carries our genetic information. And this basic unit, I want you to remember the structure called nucleosome. It's a sort of a octomer of proteins wrapped around with this DNA in here. And DNA carries your genetic information. Your genes are in your DNA. And there's a process called transcription which uses DNA as a template to synthesize RNA, and a process called translation, which basically uses RNA to synthesize protein, and proteins are building block of our lives, right? So proteins can function in a single or in multiple complexes. So that's all I wanted you to know. Chromosomes, basic unit nucleosomes, carry DNA as our genetic information, which can result in synthesis of RNA, and RNA can be used to be translated into protein. So with chromosomes that we have in our cells, every once in a while, what happens with these chromosomes, a portion of one chromosome can be broken off and realigned with another chromosome. And this process is known as translocation. Actually, this process was discovered here in Chicago back in the 70s by a fantastic cytogeneticist named Janet Raleigh. And what Janet showed is that some of the gene in this chromosome, the brown chromosome in here, is realigned with the genes in the blue chromosome. And now this form a chimeric protein, half one chromosome, the other half another chromosome. And this chimeric protein, for example, is seen in this child, an eight-year-old boy, with an 11-4 translocation, results in pathogenesis of acute myelogenous leukemia. Who are these kids? Newborn all the way to early adolescence. They have leukemias as a result of these translocations. And the five-year event-free survival rate for these kids is less than 30%. So that means out of 100 kids who have them, 30 of them will survive, 70 will die. This was true back in 1970s when Janet discovered this translocation and is true today in 2019 with bone marrow transplantation and IRC therapy. We still don't know when we look at this translocation, we don't know which kid's gonna survive within five years. So solid tumors, you can see them on the patients. There are big lump of tumors that you can see. Liquid tumors, liquid tumors like leukemias, you're not able to see them. Here we're looking at blood analysis for some of the kids who have this translocation. This is meaningless to you, so unless I show you some control in here. You and I have 1% white blood cells in our system. This child, she has 80%. 
So her tumor is 80 times the normal. You and I have 50% red blood cells, which carries oxygen in our body. She has less than 5%. So most kids die because of infiltration of these cells to major tissues and organs, and because of lack of oxygen carrying, which is anemia. Example I'm giving you in here, so kids who basically signed into our Lori Children's Hospital in Chicago, we take some of their bone marrow aspirate and we put into the animal, this is called Xenograph model system, because we want to grow some of these cells so we can study them in the laboratory. Noah Birch, a clinical uh, fellow in the laboratory, has performed some of these experiments. This is a normal spleen in the animal. This is spleen of the animal after two weeks was in, basically in, given some of the tumors from the kids who had these translocation. So large tumor that exists in these kids that they are uncontrollable. So about 20 years ago, we, we came across this translocation, 25 years ago, we ran across this translocation that MLL gene on chromosome 11, as I showed you in one of the chromosome, realigns with the gene on chromosome 19 and form this chimeric protein, which results into MLL ELL or into another gene in the middle ENL. Anytime you have this translocation, there is leukemia in these children. So we wanted to know what's the function of MLL, why is translocation causes leukemia, and what's the function of these partner genes, because there are no similarities between these genes, we cannot understand what they were doing, why MLL translocation to so many unrelated genes results in leukemic pathogenesis. So first thing first, what's the function of MLL itself? So we went back to a simple eukaryotic system, yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and identified this gene named SET1 as a homologue of MLL. So we move on into yeast. Most of you guys use yeast in your kitchen to make bread or sometimes in your basement to make wine. This is bread and wine with yeast. We use yeast in the laboratory to learn about life because it's an easy way of growing a lot of these cells, easy way of extracting proteins from this, and easy way to do genetics with them. So we perform experiments with the yeast extract to understand set one. And from yeast extract, we purified a protein complex which we named COMPASS for complex proteins associated with SET1, which it was a multimeric protein complex and an enzyme that can modify that nucleosomal substrate that I showed you. Remember, your chromosomes made the basic unit that are nucleosomes, and the function of COMPASS was to modify this nucleosome. So basically, it's a modifier of chromatin, and it regulates transcription, gene expression. So we showed that there is one COMPASS in yeast, my lab identified three compass family members from Drosophila melanogaster. These are pesky little flies that sit on your watermelon. We use them for genetic tools in the laboratory, and they're very powerful to learn about basic genetic and processes of transcription. And we also identified in you and I and in mammals six compass family members. So it gets very complicated. There's one in one organism and six in you and I. And why do you have so many is not clear to us, but what we know is that when cancer genome has been sequenced in the United States, Large number of cancers have mutations in all of these COMPASS family members. So I'll mention to you that there are translocations of MLL, and MLL translocations are associated with leukemic pathogenesis. So there are two copies of every gene in your chromosomes. Right? You have one chromosomal copy that carries a wall tap MLL, and one, type of the one copy of the chromosomal copy that is translocated, and then you have this fusion protein. And one of the early study, Kevin Lang, a fantastic graduate student in my laboratory, identified, he showed that this chimera is a lot more stable than untranslocated copy. And this means, basically, this is very stable protein. It can bind like a glue to our chromosome and move with this process of transcription and misregulate this process of transcription. So Kevin asked a very simple question. How can he make this untranslocated copy stable? And can this stabilize untranslocated copy bump this chimera off the chromatin. That's all he wanted to do. He performed about five years in the lab, performed his genetic and biochemical screen, and identified stabilizers of MLL, and he did the experiment. So here we are looking at a cell that is leukemic, but is independent of translocations that we are seeing. And this drug that he discovered has no effect on the growth of these cells. I mean, it's not a toxic drug. But when he goes to the leukemic cell that are MLL dependent, this is without the drug, this is with the drug. He actually stopped the cells from growing. We develop animal model system in collaboration with my colleague John Crispino here at Northwestern Medicine. And using this animal model system, we asked how is our drug affecting the, basically the growth of leukemia in the animals? And this, the answer is very simple. This is without the drug, and this is with the drug. We were able to extenuate life very heavily in the organism, in this animal. So our first conclusion is that stabilization of MLL, one portion of this chromosome, allows clinical therapy of leukemias, at least in preclinical studies that we are doing. The second question that we have had in the lab is that why MLL translocation to so many unrelated genes 
always give you the same disease. And that was been an anomaly in the field for the past 30 years since Raleigh and colleagues at Chicago discovered this translocation. So over 20 years ago, we showed that this factor, ELL, is a transcription factor. So basically, if you consider transcription a process of by which the, the enzyme moves on a template on your gene, this guy is the Mario Andretti of the transcription world. He wants to make transcription go faster. Right? So the function of this gene is to make transcription go faster. And the question became in the field, if this one is a transcription factor that makes the process move faster, what's the function of the rest of these guys? Right? Through about 15 years of research, we finally found that, that all of these guys are actually component of one complex doing exactly the same thing. So if you consider my hand as a transcription factor, we think that many of the MLL translocation partners are my fingertips. And no matter what translocation you have between MLL and gene on different chromosome, you always mislocalize this factor to many of the MLL target gene and misregulate the process of transcription. So this idea that we proposed over 20 years ago that going from slow polymerase to a fast polymerase in the process of transcription is central for leukemia in pediatric leukemia and MLL translocation. It turned out to be true. Most importantly, many of the solid tumors now carry basically the same mechanism, such as MIC overexpressed solid tumors, which would be including prostate cancer, breast cancer, brain tumors. A large number of tumors are driven by MIC. And we know that going from slow to fast is central in that process. So if this change in the state of process of transcription is central in here, the major player would be this factor that we identified that contains all the MLL translocation partners in it. So how can we make this complex go away, right? And this has been a, been a large research in my laboratory. And we take advantage of basic molecular identification of the structure of these complexes. We feed the structures into the computer. And as the computer among the 10 million compounds that are known, this is much faster. We don't have to do it in the lab. Computer does all the calculation. You just need a large cluster to carry this thing for a few months. And so computer basically fits compound by compound in this process in here and asks the question of the 10 million, which one can affect the stability in here and disrupt this complex formation. So we identify 160 out of 10 million, synthesize this 160, and identify two compounds that had major effect on the stability of this complex. So I can show you in here data analysis in here that you're looking at the rate of transcription inside the cells. So basically, normally polymerase travels around 4 kb per minute. This is a rate at which we can calculate movement of transcription. If we add our drug number one, KL1, we can slow it down to 3 kb. And KL2 basically slows down by 50% to 2 kb. So we have provided the very first compound to slow down the process of transcription inside the cells. So we're testing in tumors that are driven as a result of fast transcription. These are the tumors that are not treated. These are the tumors that are treated. And if you look at this curve analysis, it's called Kaplan-Meier curve. Animals that are not treated, they rapidly they die. Animals that are treated, they can live much longer. So the second conclusion is that the process of going from slow to fast is important for cancer pathogenesis, especially for leukemias. Moving this fast to slow would be a key for therapy in here. And we have provided the community for the first chemical compound that is capable of doing this. So I started my talk by telling you for the past 25 years, we want to understand why translocation of this large gene MLL to so many unrelated gene causes leukemia. And that's where we are now. We have discovered these mechanism. We have series of compounds that are able to stabilize this half of the chimera. We have series of compounds that are able to destabilize this half of the chimera. And now we are just mixing and matching in here. And hopefully we have a right cocktail that we can move into kids. And hopefully we can have pediatric leukemia extinct forever. So that's the goal that we have had for the past 25 years. And I think within the next 10 years, we will have something that probably going to move on FDA approval into the clinic. As I mentioned to you that this is not the only factor within this family that they characterize involved in leukemia. There's a large number of mutations in many of these complexes that are involved in a lot of solid adult tumors. And the goal in the lab is to identify the mechanism and follow through with what we have done in regard to leukemia for clinical therapy of these solid tumors. With that, I'd like to stop and thank, this is my laboratory in here. This guy is the hero in here. Kevin did but the two stories that I told you. He actually moved on from my laboratory to start his own independent laboratory last year. And there's a large group of people who are working on other factors that I showed you. 
And great thanks goes to National Cancer Institute, which has been supporting our laboratory for a long time and recently provided us with this outstanding investigator award, which supports most of the work in the lab. And endowment from the Samson Quarry for the epigenetic, our colleagues at Lori Children's and Northwestern Medicine. Here's my email address. If you have any questions, love to chat with you about this. Thank you. Thank you.